Um, good to see you all. Thanks for joining us. I'm really excited to have our special guest today, um, Ellen Heald. And Ellen is the director of a program um, at that that is housed at Salem State College or University, actually, and it's run through the um, uh, North Shore Education Consortium. And so, and, and then also, Ellen is a support broker for the Ark of Massachusetts. So, from the get go, she's been doing virtual learning throughout this whole COVID um, crisis. And so, she's going to share with us today a little bit about. Um, how the virtual learning's going, how she's organized it, um, also uh, what are, um, you know, some of the things that she's learned in terms of uh, setting it up of what works, what doesn't work, and that sort of thing. So without further ado, Ellen, I just made you co-host, so you should be able to advance the slides. Um, trying to advance this one now. Okay, here we go. So uh, I'll let you take it away, Ellen. Well, hi, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well in this uh, new challenge that we have. Uh, I, I tell you, it's been pretty amazing. Uh, I think, you know, no, no one would have thought three months ago or so that we would uh, be teaching remotely um, within a matter of a few days. And uh, it's really that I have students, um, so the, the consortium, to give you a little bit of overview, has eight different programs. Uh, they're all special ed programs. So I am the director of the ones on the campus of Salem State, which is the Embark and the SOAR program. So there are students uh, ages 18 to 22 who come for transitional needs. Um, they all participate in paid internships in the community with partnerships such as CVS and doggy daycares and assisted living and whatnot. Um, as well as some of them go off to college at either North Shore or Salem State or other colleges and we help facilitate that. And then, you know, a lot of social skills, functional life skills. Um, so there's a variety of needs. Academically, the students range from anywhere kindergarten level through students going on to four-year degrees. So quite a range of students. Um, so I, I think one of the, the biggest takebacks is that I've had uh, you know, probably 95% of my students be able to log into a Zoom meeting consistently. Um, and you think of that academic span, that's pretty amazing. And they've been able to, to do it or reach out for help if they needed it. So to give you an example of what we started, Carrie, if you, I'm not sure how to go to the next screen. Can you flip that? Thank you. So this is a, um, the SOAR program schedule. And the SOAR program typically are students like seventh grade academically through students that go to college. So the sword and bark programs have slightly different classes, but the format is the same. Our goal originally when the closure happened and the uh, move to remote learning was to provide a structure, a consistent structure and stability for all students. So what we came up with is five 45 minute periods. So if you look at this one, um, we also, if you think about, we used to have of different academic groups. So we'd have four different academic groups within each program. Now we need to have a, a topic that can adapt to the different needs of the students with a wider variety of academic challenges. So what we came up with was the 50 Nifty United States. So both groups have this class um, and they concentrate on one state a day, facts, and they have, you know, depending on the group, different assignments with it. Um, we've had some guest speakers from different states, which has been really fun. Um, then the next class is career exploration. Um, and that one is all about how to get a job, how to interview. Um, we go through some different websites. When we get down to some other slides, I'll show you some of the ones that we use specifically um, for that class. And then what we wanted to do, our goal was to kind of set the beginning of the day and the end of the day with more fun kind of social things to really get the students engaged, to kind of decrease the stress. And in the middle of the day at 1130, our clinical team takes over. They run groups on managing stress and anxieties, you know, um, to, to talk about, you know, what's going on, but also any other, um, you know, family issues that are coming up, all everyone being home together. How do you manage that? Giving people their space in your home when they need it. 
um, how to stay well yourself. So the reason right after. So if a student or family is really struggling, the clinical team could reach out to them individually and, and work with them on a specific um, kind of strategies. Then um, we just started this art program. So part as we've continued this, our goal was to enrich it more. So in addition to the five periods a day, we offer art for each group one time per week, kind of as a pilot to see what we would need to do if our summer program continues remotely and how we could incorporate like art, music and other kind of activities. So once a week, um, our art teacher does uh, this class and it's optional, um, but we've had some, some good results with it and it's helping us figure out for the summer program what materials we would need to have delivered to students' houses so they could participate more effectively and kind of planning going forward. Then we have a class called technology where there's a slide I'll show you a little bit later in this um, and then community skills. Um, so that's all about, you know, travel training, which obviously we can't do in person right now, but um, how do you read bus schedules and whatever going forward um, and lots of different, you know, shopping, health, wellness kinds of things. So if you want to go to the next screen, uh, Carrie. So this is example of our Embark program, which is a similar structure, just the classes are a little bit, a um, little bit more geared toward their academic levels. All the passwords are the name of the program, so they don't have to get confused that each class has a different password, so we tried to make that consistent. And then again, we start off with fun things in the morning, the flexibility class and wellness, um, and then we end with dance parties and group games. Um, with more of the academic and social emotional needs in the middle of the day. So that's just an example there of the Embark program. And then if you want to go to the next screen, Carrie. So one of the classes that I was talking about was um, the technology class. So this is taught by a person. Um, so some of the things that they focus on and and during this time, we really wanted to give families some resources and what kinds of free apps that students could use. So regardless of their five class times a day, um, they could, you know, on weekends or after school hours, um, log into some of these free apps. So they would go through different apps each day and teach students what each one was about and how to use it. One of the challenges um, is that while staff are still technically full-time, we also need to take into account their personal needs um, and their own family situations. Some are home with elderly parents, some are home, you know, with young children and whatnot. So what I've done is each staff member is responsible for leading one class period a day, and then some of them co-teach just so they're not overwhelmed. And then each staff member also has a caseload of students that they check in with each um, individually usually three to four times per week and provide individual support, which I'll show you as we scroll down. So this is kind of the, the app one um, and the different ones that they've been using. Um, they really love, you know, the puzzle ones and escape rooms and, and challenges, which some of those have been used in our game groups. And then if you want to go to the next suite, um, slide there, Kerry. So this talks about um, the class. It's at 1130, you know, some clinical supports. They use a lot of um, I don't know if people have heard of DBT, so it's uh, dialectical behavioral um, therapy, which uh, kind of helps students stay present in the moment. So what can you do right now that's going to help you manage what you're going through? Um, and then they, they make games around it to make it a little more engaging. So they've done, you know, Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune and um, who wants to be a millionaire? So there's a link at the bottom. If, uh, if you want more information on that. And we also do um, Thursday nights, we do a parent support group. And we've had some really great success with that um, and actually have practiced these DBT skills with the families. So if they're struggling or their child's struggling, then they can start using these skills if it's helpful to them. And we've had a really great percentage of parents log on to our Zoom meetings, which has been good to hear their feedback on how things are going and and moving forward, what we need to consider. You know, some, some students five Zoom meetings a day is, is a little too much. So they'll pick three or four to join into um, and then do something else in the, the other time. So different kinds of options. Um, Carrie, if you wanna to go to the next screen. 
So this is um, a career exploration class, which uh, Melissa is a staff member. She oversees all our internships and community partnerships. She also runs um, classes for certificate programs like Serve Safe or the partnership with CVS, you can get a retail certificate and kind of bypass their online application process if you do this. So this is what she focuses on here. Um, if you look at the website, it has what's called the myplan.com uh, um, membership and it's really exploring what kind of job might meet their skills and interests, if they're a college bound student, what kind of college pathways um, for a specific um, you know, career path that they're interested in. So um, she does a, lo a lot with the job. She's actually for this summer, since we're not really sure if we're going to be in person or remote um, yet, we're kind of planning plan A, plan B, plan C, plan C and a half not knowing yet. So what she's done is um, there's a job, Dirty Jobs um, show. I don't know if anyone's heard of it, but it's a great way to kind of explore what I really want this job and what does this job entail? And she, it has video clips that are a great you know, discussion starter. So students, hopefully when we get back to in-person and back to our internships, they can be able to kind of narrow down what they may or may not be interested in and what would be a good fit. So. Uh, there's a little work still going on with that, even though we're doing it remotely at this point. And then, Carrie, if you want to go to the next screen. It's Carrie there. <laughs> there we go. Um, so group games. Um, this is one of the classes at the end of the day, um, because our goal, again, was to have students log off on their school day. Um, was you know feeling good about the day and seeing their friends and and having fun and we actually changed the hours um, of our school day a little later knowing that some students will be staying up later and um, starting their morning a little later so our classes don't start till 9 30 where our typical in-person school day starts at 8 30 and they go until 2 45 so that by that point um, and able to participate. So these are just some of the ones that they've, they've done. Um, I hear that one of the favorite is Name That Tune. Um, I'm glad I'm not on that because no I would be terrible at it. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, it's really been one of the popular ones. We've also partnered with some of the adult service agencies uh, like Bridgewell because they have some, some Zoom games as well. So some of our students will log on and join those as well. Um, and those are at three o'clock in the afternoon. So it helps extend their, their day a little bit longer if they'd like to. And Carrie, can you switch to the next one? Yep, and then this one is, I have uh, a couple staff members that I don't have leading a specific Zoom class. Instead, um, I have students that need very individualized one-to-one -one support. And some of the, some examples are, I have three or four that are taking that were taking classes at North Shore Community College when North Shore um, also returned, went to virtual learning. So a staff member would check in and have Zoom meetings with them to go over their course syllabus to make sure they were still on track, track for um, to pass the course and what supports they needed. Some of these would last 15 minute check ins to an hour doing, you know, a writing assignment or a math assignment with a student and they would meet again the next day until the assignments were done. So this was very individualized based on, on the students' needs. Um, and it's worked out really well. And uh, the students that we had attending um, college classes have all passed. One just sent me a message, he got a 95 on his first college class. So that was pretty encouraging considering the challenges uh, they've had this semester. And then um, some of these websites here, like the bottom one, Ingenuity, we use for kind of a baseline for students uh, to start with the, either credit recovery, they need like one more math class to get, most, most of the students have passed all their credit requirements, but occasionally they might need one more class. So we'll use it for that, but also for students who are considering going to college, but not really sure if it's for them. So we'll work with them on an online class through Ingenuity or Coursera, which is 
on that list as well to kind of get a baseline. Are, are they really ready for this? And what would we need to put in for supports to help them be successful? So it's a, it's a great kind of starting place. And now what I see is, is this kind of change to remote learning is that this is how colleges are going to be working, you know, at least at some point. So their skill set learning this is, um, is going to just be helpful for them going forward, even as far as, you know, employment meetings. So it's a, it's a natural part of their transition, shall we say, which was unexpected. <laughs> so then Carrie, if you want to go to the next. All righty. So I think that that's the end. That was the last slide. Did you yep. have one more? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. No, nope, no. Nope. Didn't capture it. Can you share your screen and put it up or? Oh, no, I, I didn't have one more. No, no. Yeah. Okay. So, no, I wow. I am like so impressed over how comprehensive this is and the length of time. I'm just curious. Um, you know, we will share um, Ellen's PowerPoint with you all after the uh, webinar is over. And I'm just wondering if anybody had some questions for Ellen. I, I, I mean, you've been doing this since almost the get-go, haven't you? When did you start virtual uh, teaching with, with your students? So, uh, March 17th. So wow. we... We, our last day at school was March 12th, only because we had professional development on March 13th and it was not a day for students. And then our professional development was canceled. So we would have had our last third day, March 13th, but then we started up on the 17th and then we've added a few, few minor changes going forward. And we're, you know, now we're planning the summer program and, you know, um, trying to see what we can do to enhance it. Great. How about um, any questions from the audience? Just curious if there's any parents on there. Have you, are your of transition age uh, kids, are you seeing uh, similar to what, um, you know, uh, SOAR and Embark are uh, providing for people? You can unmute, unmute yourself if you want to chime in and share. Yeah, what I found interesting, Carrie, is, is no two school systems that I'm aware of are doing it the same way. And yeah. even within the same town, like the ele how elementary is doing, how middle school is doing, how high school is doing it, how their programs are doing it. Are entirely different. Interesting. Yeah. No, it's it was a, a tall order in a very short time. Mm -hmm. Charlie, did you have a question? I always have a question, Carrie. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can hear you. I am so impressed. I am I am thinking not only in terms of training students, but it's gonna make them more marketable down the road because most of us had to play catch up with the Zoom stuff. And having kids do that and feel comfortable with it. Um, it's structured and it also, I think in many ways, taps into some of the strengths that you would not have seen without the Zoom stuff. I, I, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed. Um, great job, Ellen. It's great. Um, what kind of feedback are you getting from the students in terms of their liking it, not liking it? Um, and how will you use what you're doing now and bringing that forward into your curriculum going when you're back in front of people and in the days ahead? Well, I, I find that most of the students like it. There, there's been some feedback that it's hard for them to focus with so many people on the screen. So we've learned about different um, editing options, you know, right. how to only see the speaker on the screen, and not have the gallery view. So they've right. learned those types of things to be helpful. Um, they really miss their internships. I think that's the biggest part um, going out in the community because they were all getting getting paid for their jobs and having social interactions as well. So that's the part I think that I hear consistent feedback that they can't wait to get back to their internships. Um, going forward, I see us using this, you know, if we're in person, we'll be using it to send out homework assignments, things like that. Um, I think for all the students, you know, again, I, I said how impressed I am that they were all able to 
log on and figure it out. We've even had IEP meetings and I had one the other day and the parent um, was new to Zoom and I had her son, who's my student, come over and she was like, can you show me how to do this and how to turn up the volume? And <laughs> so, and he showed her exactly, exactly how to do it. And this is a student who never would have gotten in front of the screen before. Right. You know, what's interesting too is one of my students who's in college and he works at the Salem Police Department, the Records Department, um, and does a fantastic job with them through the school. And he was very resistant to using Zoom because he didn't want to be on video. He didn't want other students or the teacher that he works with seeing his, his personal house and his space and wherever he was set up. So we talked about how to do a background and we just met with him on the phone at first and thinking that as he goes forward taking college classes, he's gonna need to be able to be in breakout rooms. He's gonna need to be able to get his, his video on to pass certain hybrid classes in the college setting and or he, he's kind of a tech guy. If he's in the tech field, he's gonna be expected to join remote meetings regardless you know where he works so i think for him it's a very important skill and so we're working on him you know he's meeting with a staff member three times a week and he just started sharing his screen with the one staff member so really excited that he's making progress on that and, and learning these tools that i think are only going to enhance his employability going forward and confidence that's great thank you ellen um dolores had a uh comment in the chat box she said that she's really impressed with the amount of work that you're doing uh this is really great yeah all right and, and if i can piggyback off of that also to carrie that i am very oh, no problem with the amount of time that staff is spending um with the students i know you said several times a week um individually that they are um, meeting via zoom or whatever with the students that is phenomenal i'm not saying it doesn't happen in a natural setting but i feel that because we are in this unique um, pandemic situation that maybe interactions are maybe a little bit more meaningful and I think you can kind of get to the heart of a lot of things when you have those one-on-one -on -one type of communication. So you guys are doing phenomenal. I was just very impressed. You don't even know. I was on mute and my camera was off, but I was like, wow, this is phenomenal. Well, thank you. It's, 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 it's been interesting. Yeah, how about anybody challenge, else? But I think, you know, I have a great team. And yeah, I, I was gonna ask, how many staff do you have? And are you uh, all full time? Uh, they're I'm not sorry. all full time. Nope. Um, we have 15 staff, um, but some of them are paras, so they're not really required to lead a class. Uh, but what I've done is I've teamed up the paras to do some special assignments. So, for instance, they've been working on the yearbook. They've been um, doing what we call the birthday celebrations. And this was a tricky one because of the boundary issues and privacy issues that you face is every month we would have a birthday party. Um, for all the students of, with, or staff and birthdays of that month. And since, you know, th this uh, switch, um, we're trying to figure out how to still celebrate those moments with all the concerns that need to be thought about. So we sent out uh, a email to the parents and asking if they would like to participate in a birthday celebration remotely for their son or daughter. And my parents go around on the day of their birthday and, and put a cupcake in their doorstep. And then we have a scheduled Zoom birthday party after school hours, usually around three or four in the afternoon and they sing happy birthday and everyone eats their cupcake together. Um, so it's, it's pretty cute. And then we also deliver, we ask them again first, if it's okay to have a pizza delivered. If so, what pizza place would they prefer? What kind of pizza, what time of day? And, and so the Paris set all that up um, and have the pizza delivered for the birthday person. So some of those little fun things too that they can look forward to. Yeah, that's, that's great. I've seen a lot of birthday parades in my neighborhood for the younger kids. <laughs> They're really kind of cute. <laughs> All the time, cars line up kids. and they have balloons and signs. And yeah, there was one uh, person also playing the guitar, singing happy birthday. It's <laughs> people have been creative, that's for sure. You want to celebrate so, those moments, is, but there's also all these you know, privacy concerns, you know, not everyone wants oh. their, their staff at their house, you know? <laughs> yep, yep, no, that's true, very true, so. 
any other questions for Ellen? Now, Ellen, where do you get your support You, in terms of, um, you know, resources and ideas? Do you belong to a certain teacher group or does your, does um, North Shore Consortium, do they provide you with, you know, ideas and I'm just curious to see, because you just um, seems like you're a wealth of information and um, I'm just wondering, you know, we're also you can share it with other educators. <laughs> yep. So there's uh, there's a couple teacher sites that my teachers log into. Um, all the principals for the Shore Consortium have meetings every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to share resources and and also the updates from Commissioner Riley um, and Governor Baker's recommendations to keep us uh, updated on what we need to consider going forward. Um, since our site is on the campus of Salem State, I have meetings with the uh, Salem State Administration on you know, what the college expectations are going to be um, as far as wearing masks and what's gonna be open, what's not gonna be open um, to make sure that my students are aware. So for instance, we have, we're gonna do a remote graduation on June 12th, but I've invited the students in one at a time to come deliver their graduation speech and we can videotape it and then put it all together for a ceremony on the 12th and making sure that they understand that to come on campus, they need to have a mask, they can't bring all their entire family. It's, it's a kind of a one-on-one -on -one or them with one parent situation come in to get their graduation picture taken, um, you know, and uh, have their speech and get their diploma remotely so we can videotape it and then send it out on the 12th for, for a celebration for all. Nice. Yeah, okay. Alrighty, so um, any, any questions? Just, you can unmute yourself or you can chat them in. I'll just check the chat box. All right. Okay. I think I think that's it. So um, again, you know, thank you, Ellen, for sharing today and your expertise and your resources. And um, you know, your students are very lucky to have your guidance in terms of uh, their their education and, and teaching. Um, so thank you for joining. Uh, we are having. Uh, a webinar tomorrow because of the holiday and Monday and Leo is going to be um, covering and um, we're having uh, Brittany from the uh, Berkshire County Art to talk about what what uh, direct support staff are are going through right now um, on Thursdays I, I think um, is with Mora and I think we're going to be discussing family visitation because that seems to have come up and also uh, testing uh, for staff and then on Friday uh, is with Ellen Taverna and Ellen does give us an update and typically a speaker from somebody um, in you know uh, Washington so it's been really interesting to uh, keep up to date on uh, what's going on and uh, just let's see one more slide and I thank you all for your uh, your help and your support and um, also being part of the Arc of Massachusetts. So um, chat, I'm looking at the chat box. Carrie, will we be using the same link as today? Yes. Oh, uh, for tomorrow, Dolores, or for next week with me? Tomorrow. You have to read. Tomorrow, okay. You have to. Uh, it would be the same link you would use for um, Monday if you were going to be on the call on Monday with with Leo. It's the same one. If you registered for Monday, it it will just be done on on Wednesdays. Okay, this week. maybe Donna register because I'm I'm not registered for that one. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. All right. Well, everybody, you have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine, and we'll uh, see you soon. All right. Thanks, Take everybody. care, everyone. Thanks again, Ellen. <laughs>